Hi, this is Uncle Bob. Thought I'd share a few of my memories of Bob Dylan when he was at Gertie's Folk City. I was uh, in the crowd. It was crowded, but it was a, Gertie's was a small place. Uh, it was the premier folk music place in New York City for a long time. This was the early 60s when Dylan was just breaking in. Uh, I heard him the second time he appeared at Gertie's, and I remember the little flyer <coughs> said, Back by popular demand. The, the folk singers at that time, the youngsters, generally would her singing traditional folk songs. And they'd come on and they'd give a little story of how the music, you know, the history of it and stuff, and then sing it. And uh, there were some good singers there. But when Dylan got up, he just kind of said, I, you know, I, I've written some songs. Uh, I think you'll find him interesting. And then he sang, and he held our attention, I'll say that. Uh, it was a little hard to appreciate the, the strength of some of his lyrics because he was... Didn't sing very clearly. It was a kind of a garbled Midwest accent with uh, who knows what. Uh, and you had to listen very carefully to hear what the words were. <laughs> and he would just sag through a set, said goodbye, and that was that. Well, uh, from then on, he was a, a regular feature at Gertie's. I didn't live in the village. I lived out in New Jersey. I worked at an aerospace company. We worked weekends, a lot of overtime hours, and we got comp time. And on my comp time, I went into the village and went to mostly jazz club. But uh, for folk music, I went to Gertie's. I remember Dylan as being very serious and very focused. The other singers, and, you know, we they kind of joke around and, and pal around and so on, and Dylan kind of sat by himself with his uh, girlfriend at the time and kind of had a scowling look or a serious look or whatever. He didn't invite you to go up and shake his hand and say, Hi, Bob. <laughs> How's the folk music going? So he was focused, but he did love... Uh, Woody Guthrie, I believe he was the one who suggested that we read uh, Woody Guthrie's book. He was in with Pete Seeger and the other older uh, folk singers. Well, we all were on the, you know, on the liberal side, singing about civil rights, anti-war songs, and so on and so forth. Woody Guthrie, uh, who happened to be living in Brooklyn at the time, and I remember late one night, I guess it was like two in the morning or something like that, and the crowd just wasn't very big. Maybe it was snowy or something. And Dylan said, look, why don't we all just hop in a cab and go over and say hi to Woody? I don't know if any of the others hopped in a cab. I mean, I was there, and I had a car around the block, and I... If I would have been smart, right? Not, few of us are smart when we're 22 and 23. But if I would have been smart, I'd say, hey, I got a car. Come on, everybody hop in. Let's go over and talk to Woody. It would have been a great experience. But <laughs> like many great experiences that pass you in your, I'm 73 years old now. Why, that one didn't occur just moved out of New York City back to Pennsylvania. When I got there, I turned on the college radio, and I was surprised. There was a played all Bob Dylan songs. <laughs> and, uh, that, to my mind, at that time, Dylan was one singer amongst many. You know? He had hit the big time in a hurry, and that's when I began to realize why he kind of sat aside what he said, how he worked in with other people. He had a clear 
vision of where he wanted to go, and he was going to get there, and uh, he was very focused. I love his songs. His lyrics are just incredible. As far as the liberal causes go, it didn't surprise me when he left them behind because he kind of absorbed that stuff and played it back to people. It, it wasn't really, didn't seem to be a high priority to him. What was a high priority was making his name in the world of music. And that he's done. So this is Uncle Bob saying bye-bye.